friends i would like to talk about the evil in the whole world called anger anger is a very very serious evil and uh, it has caused problems it can lead to the end of the world it has sparked off wars it has led to committing suicides this anger i feel that uh, you listeners should take precaution because anger is an emotion which is unavoidable by any category of people whether religious whether political whether in marriage whether in education whether social tribal conflicts it goes around the whole world but uh, to understand it from the basics we should know that since it is an emotion and it is part of the body feelings of the body it can be pro out of provocation the provocation can be external or can be internal in a, a human being but on a religious aspect of understanding anger we should know that god who is omnipotent omniscient omnipresent he is the creator of all things in the world he makes no mistake and right from the beginning when he created everything he saw that everything was good but we read in the bible that he got anger because of the sin committed by the our first parents adam and eve and uh, it, the anger god had with them was not a, a human anger so since he makes no mistake uh, it is called holy anger uh, if Sodom and Gomorrah God got angry because they rebelled, they offended him by living sinful life and yet he was expecting them to live according to the commandments he had given human beings where he even said if you follow the commandments you will be blessed even live a long life but the people of Sodom and Gomorrah decided to have a lifestyle which made God angry. And when you continue reading the Bible, you will find that God got angry with David who committed, who committed adultery with Uriah's wife and even made her pregnant. So God uh, God offended him, and that is anger. And uh, he went ahead uh, that David, King David, to plan for the death of the husband of Bathsheba, whom he, he had committed adultery with. The uh, Uriah was uh, killed. You see, one would wonder how could God leave all that evil to continue when uh, God has got him. Uh, all the power to stop evil that is a misconception because god gave man the will to choose good and evil so you and each has got rewards if you choose good you will be rewarded with eternal life you will be rewarded with blessings you will be rewarded with everything good but if you choose evil, as Adam listened to the, the, to the devil through the serpent, then you get condemnation. Therefore, God was angry with David. And uh, since he's a merciful God, he's uh, our father, our loving God, because God is love, 
he always waits his patient in his anger he waits for anybody who has made him angry to repent and he would forgive his merciful god so he sent Nathan the prophet to David to tell David that what you have done has made God angry and when God is angry you may get the punishment you may suffer his wrath but it is so impressive the message how it was delivered to David by Nathan it was in a, a parable Nathan started narrating a parable to the king David he said there was once a man who had a small uh, uh, ship a lamb now another one had many this one had only one the other person had many now when the one who had uh, many got a, a visitor instead of slaughtering at least one lamb for the visitor he went and took the lamb of the person who had only one and he remained with nothing and yet this one had uh, many so uh, nathan prophet nathan asked david what well, you as a king what is your judgment about that person who did that injustice to the person who had only one lamb king david was outrageous he said that one must really be punished i think even with the death sentence and uh, nathan really surprised him by saying no you are the one and uh, king david got so shocked how he he, he has been told that you are the one when he hadn't slaughtered the enemy, he hasn't grabbed any lamb from anybody. Since it was in a parable form, uh, Nathan explained to David that for you as a king, you have many wives. But you went ahead and got the wife of Uriah. You committed adultery with the Ha. now god is not happy with you and you have to be punished because you even went ahead and uh, 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 and caused the death of uriah so david being remorseful he really cried for repentance asking for repentance from god and there we get some 51 which uh, is a, a very very educative inspiring to all of us who commit sins because it was written by david out of that uh, repentance of the grave sin he had committed so being a merciful god he had the tears of not uh, David and uh, he forgave him he reconciled with him and you can see the anger of uh, uh, God is not the human anger because now David was uh, a man of God's heart the heart he became the the the, 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 the where the our Lord uh, the Savior descended from the family tree the lineage so it teaches us about anger that uh, even if we make uh, god angry with the, our daily sins we should always feel remorseful we should ask for forgiveness and life co continues and another uh, story from the bible which illustrates uh, the, the the relationship between god and man as far as the god's anger is and uh, his mass is about the citizens of nineveh they, they had also uh, led a sinful life and god was angry with them 
And being merciful, he sent Jonah to tell them that they are left with only 40 days. If they don't repent, then the whole of Nineveh plus all the occupants would be destroyed. This is synonymous with the Sodom and Gomorrah. You can see, very interesting, because with the Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham tried to plead to God that if there were uh, about 50 people who were righteous, uh, would he, would God really destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? God said no. Uh, Abraham kept on reducing the number, pleading if there were 30 like that, and there were none except Lot. But here, when the Ninevites got the message from Jonah, right from the king, actually the king himself ordered a fast, right from himself, all the natives of Nineveh, including the babies suckling and the animals, all went into a fast. It is a real historical because uh, the modern fasting to babies and even children below 15 years are not supposed to fast, even the elders above 59 they are not supposed to fast during this fasting uh, period, but that is in the Old Testament. So when they fasted, they put on back a cloth. They, they they smeared themselves with the, with the ash. They prayed, prayed for repentance from God, forgiveness from God, and uh, God had their cries. And he relented. So you can see how he, uh, he changed his mind. He never destroyed. He never, he never destroyed the, uh, Nineveh. So the, those are good examples of uh, describing anger. Because anger can be very destructive when it is taken in an evil perspective. But the anger of the human beings that's where you find that it is the devil instigating that anger that's why in the church our catholic church it is called a capital sin we have seven capital sins uh, pride we have anger we have got uh, envy we have lust we have greed gluttony, and uh, sloth those are capital sins. They are the mother of all the sins. So when we look at anger being one of them, it is the one which has led to domestic violence, political violence, racial discrimination, like apartheid. All of that is human. So to fight the anger, it must be fought from the roots. And the roots are this uh, capital uh, scenes. When you uh, go back up to the anger uh, of God, you will uh, realize or learn that right from heaven, when Lucifer rebelled with the, 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 the rebellious angels, God had to, this, uh, ex uh, to excommunicate them from heaven. He banished them never to go back to heaven. So you can really describe it as anger, but it is holy, holy anger, because God is a, a, not, not a human being. He cannot be influenced by the devil. It is a, the human beings who are victims or, or, of, the, of the devil. Who, so to use uh, that uh, anger to be uh, a, a stepping stone for, to commit uh, other, uh, other sins. So we, we learn that the anger, even when he, Jesus, the Son of God, came on earth, he took up the human nature. So he had two natures in one, a hundred percent God, a hundred percent man. And uh, you really see that he, even that anger 
could come in him but since he is a hundred percent god and then a hundred percent man again his anger would be holy anger that, what does that mean that means the action he 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 could take would be for the benefit of even the the, the people who came to save because he, the way we see his anger is when he was annoyed about the traders, gamblers in the temple, trading. And he said, you have turned the house of my father into a, a den of thieves, gamblers. Because gambling is really evil. It is not something holy. So he overturned the, the, the tables and got a whip and... That is uh, justified because uh, a holy place is not uh, supposed to be for gambling as some human beings have turned churches into uh, discotheques uh, like that. And uh, the, Jesus demonstrates uh, to us that his anger was not the one from uh, the, the devil. And uh, when he could rebuke we rebuke the people he would rebuke them the way god himself would do because if he came to save us and saving us was through his death sacrificing his life on the cross but when he mentioned it to the apostles peter retorted very very fast that no, 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 because he told them, we are going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be handed over to the high priest, to those sinful men who will crucify me after taking me to the courts of law and what, and uh, they will kill me, but on the third day I will resurrect. Peter he said, no, 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 that cannot happen. Even So he told him that, get behind me, Satan. What you talk is not of uh, the spirit towards uh, the devil because he wouldn't really uh, stop uh, the mission God or his father sent him for, that is to sacrifice uh, himself. You see that uh, uh, the anger now, can you can start differentiating it because... When we come now to ours, which is uh, the human anger, and it is full of uh, evils, because it goes from stage to stage. When the devil is instigating a person, he moves from state to uh, one step to another step, and eventually the, the, the devil gets his agenda fulfilled. Because the agenda of the devil is to steal, to destroy, and to kill. So all these uh, uh, victims of uh, the devil uh, through anger are languishing in the prisons or they have already been uh, uh, sentenced to death and um, some of them have been hanged. And it is regrettable because they acted out of anger. And this anger can be stopped from the beginning, especially when you know that the end result will be this, this track, uh, will be negative both for yourself, the perpetrator, and the victim. So if you can avoid the anger, then you can... Uh, be godly as he, Jesus said be holy and perfect like he, my father but if you respond to the anger you will find killings uh, all the this domestic violence everything which is not good and uh, it is regrettable because the law uh, of the land is there to protect the citizens of every country. But you find in countries, uh, because of the anger, 
of each leader, uh, they go to war. And the, the, the victims, uh, the innocent citizens who are running in exile, who are being killed, You've, in every country, most of the countries, you will find anger has got a, a very, very bad effects. But now, when we talk of countries, there we are generalizing so much. But look at as an individual. The anger can affect the health of the person. You can, it can raise high blood pressure. It can bring a headache. It can exacerbate the diseases you are suffering from, whether you have diabetes or you have kidney problem, whether you, are, you have cancer. Or, all of this, you find even the metabolism is not proper because of anger. You go into the feet, so the body is subjected to the drastic change in its mechanism. And uh, you, there you find yourself uh, contracting diseases or worsening even the ones you have just because you allowed the anger to control you. It is uh, you to control the anger, not the anger to control you, because once the anger controls you, then it is the devil. Now, when you look at uh, uh, the cause and the effects, you will find if it is politics, uh, when there are campaigns in most countries, uh, those campaigns, they, they end in clashes. The rival parties, they start clashing, and the gun is there to be used to really kill the opponents. And uh, political upheavals have really taken a heavy toll of lives just because of the anger. Then the religious conflicts, you have had many people claiming to be killing in the name of God. All that is just anger. If God is our creator, is our father, then that means we should live as brothers and sisters. Now, if we, we start killing ourselves and yet it is the same heaven which we are striving to, to reach, then how shall we live in heaven where there is only love? There is no anger in heaven. Anger stops on earth here. And to go to heaven, we have to practice how we shall live in heaven on earth here. Because we are supposed to live uh, loving the, the neighbor. If you don't love the neighbor, that means you cannot love God. Because John, the evangelist, is saying, if he, you, you don't love the brother whom you see, then how can you love claim to love God whom you don't see. You see, it is very easy to understand it if we take it in a, a mature perspective. Then you find the marriage conflicts. They have also taken a heavy toll of lives, uh, businesses, and uh, we have got uh, this rivalry of a love going sour or uh, competing for the same uh, boyfriend. You find the girls uh, using acid. So many acid attacks, especially in my country, they, they had even an association of the acid victims. A girl pouring acid on another girl just because they are rivaling over the same bo boyfriend. So that one is really very evil uh, anger where you are the, the, the law of the land cannot just see, leave you to go scot free then we have racial pre prejudice we know South Africa has come out of the apartheid but before that it was a real racial prejudice apartheid and it cost a lot of uh, lives and conflicts which are tribal but even in a small country where there are different ethnic groups, they, 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 don't, they don't live in harmony. 
completely they don't live in in in, in harmony why just for their own uh, prejudices because even in marriage they will not allow you to marry from another tribe so me what i i did as i'm talking like this uh, me i wrote a book uh, about anger because i was inspired of this evil which has really permeated the whole world yeah, and uh, being the reason of even destruction even these nuclear weapons atomic bombs which fell on nagasaki and hiroshima all oh, sophisticated weapons gunships all of that is out of anger because you cannot fight when you are uh, friendly when you are in love with each other no so i wrote a book and the title is anger uh, me the author godfrey wababa the friend canon retired i really highlighted the causes of the anger and the negative effects of uh, this anger but it is not good to lament to lament uh, uh, about the effects and how it is spreading like a cancer or it is worse than cancer it is worse than covid you we must also look for the remedy and that's why i ended with the the last chapter of my book about anger management if we can really practice anger management then we can live a very very peaceful life in this world it can be as a, a group that anger management or as an individual to start with because charity begins at home even when you are moving uh, going out to start a journey you start with one step so i wrote it and uh, the highlights highlights were how do you put this anger in control because now if you don't control it it will be self destructive also people have committed suicide out of anger or shame when we 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 cite uh, judah escariota judah escariota after betraying uh, jesus uh, he he sent them he, he took the money back which they gave him as a bribe to to the high priest who had really hired him, bribed him to go and, uh, and help he, uh, them to arrest uh, Jesus. Now, instead of going back to Jesus to ask for uh, forgiveness, he was so ashamed. So you can see now self-destruction. He was so ashamed, having betrayed his master, who had even appointed him as the in charge of the finances uh, we would call him minister of finance so he, the shame of going to ask for forgiveness drove him to committing suicide the likewise in the in the, in the ordinary life there are parents who have committed incest there are people who have done you obscene very very evil things and they feel the the stigma now in the public how does the public really look at them uh, in the offices where they work the social place where they go so they decide to 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 kill themselves others who are who have committed the offenses and they know they are being looked for they, they get any other means it can be a gun it can be a rope to commit suicide to kill themselves now that one is where uh, if this short life we 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 are granted by god on earth here if we just misuse it by following the wiles of the devil through this instigation of anger then we even the afterlife cannot be gra granted to us guaranteed because we have already killed if you commit suicide you you thou shall not kill 
does not mean that you killed the other person only, even yourself. Therefore, anger management is very important. Faith in God is very important. If we have faith in God, we cannot uh, go ahead to be manipulated by the devil to commit sins out of anger. So that faith is very important. Then the commandment of love. All the Ten Commandments are based on love. The first three are based on the love of God. Then the seven are based on the love of neighbor. All of us to live in harmony. Uh, God did not give the commandments as a, a trap. It, he gave the commandments so that we can live in harmony. Because if we live in harmony, we cannot hate our neighbor. We cannot plan evil against our neighbor. But the most anger, it is really everywhere in society. It is only a child. That's why Jesus said, let the children come to me because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such. The children don't get angry because when he, you discipline him and he cries, after crying, he comes back to you. And he is very happy with you. But a person who is mature, once you have offended him, he plans revenge. That is out of anger. Revenge. And yet, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35, God says, Leave vengeance to me. And we don't really abide by what God is teaching us or what he laid down for us. God is the one to handle. is the last judge. So why should we plan revenge? It is because of being overridden by anger. The anger overrides us. Then you find uh, the stigma of diseases like AIDS. People feel that shame of the AIDS, carrying the AIDS around. Then it, it, it brings, uh, brings anger in the person. All, all the sorts of diseases which make people uh, focus their attention on you and make negative comments, and they bring anger. The, and uh, this uh, poverty... Poverty, people want to live uh, comp competing in status, financial, and you find money is good for our survival here. But then, First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Money has no problem at all. It is the love and nobody gets satisfied with what he has. Everybody wants to add on, to add on, to add on. That's why the saying that uh, man is born uh, crying as a baby. He lives grumbling as a, a, a mature person. And he dies unsatisfied. Somebody who is unsatisfied is even dying with anger. You can see that. Now, when we look at the saints who, who went to heaven, don't think they were spared the anger. No, because saints were, were human beings like us. So what they, experience, what they experienced with anger, those saints left a legacy behind like... Uh, uh, the uh, Saint uh, Francis Docelles, who was a bishop, doctor of the church, he wrote a, a prayer, which I included even in my book. How? Because he really suffered from the anger himself for a very, very long time. So, more than 10 years, he was really struggling with the anger. 
That's when you can see that there is no perfect person on earth who can claim that he has never got angry and he will never uh, be angry. I have this opportunity to read to you the prayer which St. Francis Docelus left for us as a legacy on earth so that if we pray it, then he, the way he came out of that anger and he went to heaven is the way we can also manage to come out of the anger by reciting this prayer. It goes like this. Oh, oh Lord, with your help, I want to practice gentleness in daily encounters and annoyances. As soon as I realize that the anger is kindled in me, I will collect myself, not with violence, but gently, and I will seek to restore my heart to peace. Knowing that I can do nothing alone, I will take care to call you for help as the apostles did when they were tossed by the raging sea. Teach me to be gentle with all, even with those who offend me or are opposed to me, and even with myself, not burdening myself because of my faults. When I fall, in spite of my efforts, I will gently pick myself up and say, Come on, my poor heart. Let us get up and leave this pit forever. Let us have recourse to the mass of God, and he will help us. Amen. Yeah, brother, and sister, that is a prayer of St. Francis de Ocelus, who really battled anger and found that it was a real monster, this eating him up, but eventually he got that prayer which helped him, and uh, he overcame the anger. Uh, what I would advise all of us can be angry at any time, but all the advice we have been getting, uh, the Bible tells us that do not let the sun set when you are still angry. Do not go to bed with your spouse when you are still angry with her or the woman with him. Let us make sure that we dispel this anger from our hearts before the day ends. Because the devil will make us go to the next step. And that next step is action. When we are committing the sins premeditated, it is out of anger. Otherwise, I, I pray, it's my prayer, that the whole world, those who are listening to uh, my program, uh, would learn to control the anger and uh, subdue it because even if you kill, you are not going to remain here permanently because you can have the power and when you, you, you misuse that power, then uh, Lord Acton said, uh, a power uh, corrupts or it tends to corrupt. And uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So you find somebody who is a leader uh, putting suspects whom he thought they were going to maybe overthrow his government. They put the suspects on on firing squad. But after a short time, that same leader uh, also dies. So you'll find that he, by killing, you are not going to remain on earth um, eternally. The eternal life is after this uh, death. So it is better we forgive each other and when you forgive the one who has forgiven, you are the one who who gets the, the advantage. The other one who doesn't want who, whom you have forgiven and doesn't want to accept the forgiveness, then he, he, there are hot calls put on his head. So friend, anger is worse than uh, a chronic disease, it is worse than uh, cancer, it is worse than the COVID which you have just experienced. It, it is not uh, something to be proud of, but when you control it, then you can be proud of 
management of anger. Thank you very much, and uh, we pray God helps us.